Gaussian splatting. If you've been keeping up with the VFX world recently, you've probably heard this term before. In fact, right after I recorded the first version of this video, Corridor Crew actually released a video where they used the exact methods I'm going to show you how to use today. But what actually is Gaussian splatting? Well, just like how photogrammetry creates a point cloud and turns that into a mesh, Gaussian splatting makes a point cloud and turns those into smooth, colorful ellipsoids, or splats. Combined, these splats create 3D reconstructions that are second to none in terms of photorealism. But until now, if you actually wanted to make a Gaussian splat, you really were only left with two options. Use a third-party app like Luma AI, or become a whole lot more familiar with the command prompt than I think any of us want to be. That's where PostShot comes in. PostShot is basically the reality capture for Gaussian splats. It's a UI, so no need to go copying command after command and pasting it into the PowerShell or uploading your photos to who knows what server. Now you actually have full control over making your Gaussian splat and it's all done locally. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to use this program and how to export those splats and bring them into Unreal. So as always, I am Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, get subscribed, and this is how to use PostShot to create Gaussian splats. Let's jump right into it. So now I'm going to go basically over every step of the process on how we set up, train, and use PostShot. So the very first thing, of course, is you need to go ahead and download it and install it. That's always pretty easy. Go ahead and download it, install it. You may need to create an account. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember if I did. But once you're done, you can open up the PostShot app, and you should be greeted with a scene that looks somewhat like this. Now, once you've actually opened up PostShot, you should be viewing a window that looks something like this minus the gorgeous Porsche splat, of course. Uh, this is what we're going to be making today. You'll have a window that has basically these, these options on the side. You'll have this little scene thing here and your parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene, and we're actually going to train this splat from scratch. To start with, I want to go ahead and show you the images that I took of this Porsche. So I just took my camera, I set it to an extremely high shutter speed, and I just walked around it a couple times from different angles. Um, there are obviously going to be some dead spots based on the number of images that I exported out, but they're all pretty good. They're all high quality. They're sharp enough to uh, retain the detail that is needed on our final splat here. It's a little too blurry down here, but this is definitely good enough for me for today, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's go ahead and just jump straight into actually making the splat. And this is where I'm so excited to share this with you guys. It's so easy. So I'm just going to go to File, New, and then we're left with a scene like this. This should be what you're seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and select Import, and I'm going to go ahead and go over to Images. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to click Open. And it's going to open up this little dialog box for me. Now, here's two options that you just don't get in a lot of other programs. You get an option to use the best images, which basically it tries to figure out images that have motion blur in it and just ignore those. Um, or you can just set it to use all images. And for this training, I'm actually going to use all. I'm going to see what happens when I use all. Obviously, because I had a shutter speed of a thousand, none of my images were in motion blur. So it should be good. And then finally, there's this other option that says down sample images. And the default is a resolution of 1600. Now, on their website, they say that this default resolution is kind of what you want to stick with. Going higher doesn't necessarily produce better results and it can actually just increase your render times for no additional benefit. So they recommend sticking to 1600, but if you want to get a little experimental, you can always bump it up. For me, I'm actually going to get a little experimental. I'm going to set it to a whopping 2000. Finally, we have the camera poses option, which is just one thing, compute from images, and then we have a max features per frame. If you take the max features and you increase them, it'll create more points per frame. Um, pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Uh, they say the default of 8 is good, but you can go up or you can go down. If you go down, it'll take less time to calculate, but you might have more inaccurate results. If you go up, it'll take more time to calculate, but you should have more accurate results. I'm going to set this to 12 for my scene. Finally, you actually get some cool options. You could use a splat or you could create a nerf. Obviously, I want to create a Gaussian splat, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at splat. And then the splat density is the last thing that you're really going to want to mess with. So what this splat density option is, is basically 
it'll determine how many splats it makes in those you know areas where it's not exactly sure what something is if you increase the value above one it'll create more small splats in those areas if you decrease it it will just leave it with bigger larger splats but it'll be more sure that those are about i found that for this scene a value of like 1.25 to 1.5 works pretty well now, you can set it to stop training if you want after 30, or you can just let it train forever. From some other resources I found online, they say that a value of 300 is like the final point of no return where you really stop seeing any benefits. You stop seeing a lot of benefits after 30, so we can just leave it at 30. And that is basically all the settings that you need to know about. I have not messed with this create sky model setting, and I haven't really messed with anything else. So once we click import, it's just gonna start the training right away. First, it will, it'll basically do the same process that Reality Capture does. It'll try to figure out where the cameras are, then it will create a point cloud, and then finally it will create your Gaussian splat. And the cool thing is you get to see this all in real time. Now here is the first big caveat. When you train in post shot, I've noticed that it is noticeably slower than just training it in command prompt. When you're using things like Anaconda and the Gaussian splatting actual repo from GitHub, it is faster to train to 30,000 than it is in post shot. However, this is just too easy not to use. The amount of time I save by just dropping stuff in and setting my settings and clicking go compared to copying one command and copying another command in run cull map run the actual training finally running the viewer you know this just makes it so much easier i probably save time in the long run even though this takes a little bit longer to train so i'm going to go ahead and click import and i'm going to record my screen while it does all of its processing and i'll see you guys when it's done Alrighty, and now it is done. So this version of the splat looks amazing. Wheels actually have more detail than my previous one did just because of some slight changes. I did let this actually end up cooking all the way up to the 300,000, but all my other settings were the same. And really for most things, you won't need that. But just look at the detail. Look at the, just the road across the street. I, that looks amazing. Now. There's one last thing we can do to make this even better, and that's clean it up, right? Because a lot of the time you have all these weird splats, like the stuff up here floating in the air. You know, we have some random stuff. We have a bunch of gibberish out in the middle of nowhere. So we want to clean this thing up. And again, the post shot makes this super easy. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to your left hand side of the screen and you'll see these two options. One's a selection circle and one's this little box circle. So we're going to go ahead and click on the selection circle. And now we basically just have this paintbrush here. Now something I've noticed is it's a little bit harder to pan, but you can. You still just need to basically just hold alt whenever you're rotating or doing anything because if you just click now, we'll start painting. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just paint the Porsche. We're going to paint it as much as we can and we're going to you know of course there will be some areas where you can't paint something i don't know how to do is how to zoom in i guess it's i guess it's right click <laughs> when you're holding alt you can right click and hold alt to zoom in now but let's go ahead and we're just gonna rotate around and we're gonna keep painting the porsche you don't need to hold like control or anything to add more paint strokes it just automatically adds them so we're just gonna paint everything we can here something like this make sure everything's covered and we're gonna zoom out that looks pretty good i know we have a bunch of stuff over here but that's fine but now once this is all painted i'm gonna go ahead and click this invert selection option i'm gonna click delete selected splats and that's gonna delete everything except what we selected and that cleans that right up now i'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of the excess that we still have left here so i'm gonna go ahead and go through grab a bunch of these points here I don't think there's really anything else out here. So let's go ahead and hit delete select it again. We can just kind of refine this in more. Now that is awesome, but there is one thing we want to do is we want to probably bring this into a program of our choice. And today I'm going to show you how to bring it into Unreal Engine. So let's go ahead and export that. And that is super easy. I'm going to go ahead and just click the camera view again so I can just move around it. And we're going to go ahead and do file, 
export. And now I have my driveway folder here and I'm just going to call this tutorial and it saved as a PL life format. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click save and that's all you need to do. Now it is saved as a Gaussian splat point cloud. So the next thing we need to do is open up Unreal and bring this thing in. Alrighty, before we jump into Unreal, there is one thing we're going to want to pick up from the Epic Games Marketplace, and that is the Luma AI plugin. So if we go ahead and type in Luma, we'll see it right here. This is a free plugin that you can install into your engine, and it's how you'll be able to view your Gaussian splats in Unreal Engine. Now, I should note that there are a lot of limitations with using Gaussian splats in Unreal Engine still, but I have high hopes that in the future, this is going to become much more stable and have a lot more flexibility than it does today. You have to remember that this is just the beginning of this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and pop into an Unreal Engine scene and I'll show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so here we are in an Unreal Engine scene, and I'm going to show you exactly how to import your model. This is just a very basic scene. I have a little floor texture, some lights, and let's go ahead and bring our Luma AI guy in here. Now, the first thing you're going to do now that you installed that plug into the engine is you're going to need to enable it. Go ahead and head up to Edit, Plugins, and then search for Luma. Once you've found the Luma AI plugin, make sure to enable it. It'll ask you to restart. And once you've done that, you'll be able to bring your splats in. And now this is why it's so easy. If I pull up my folder where I exported that splat in the .ply format, if I go ahead and just drag it into my content browser, it will automatically import with four blueprints. Now, these four blueprints mean something. So the two baked ones are ones that can't be affected by the world's lighting. And the two dynamic ones can. So let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to drag my baked splat into the scene. It'll take a moment to load, but then there it goes. Here is our baked Gaussian splat of our Porsche, and it looks awesome. So something you'll probably notice off the bat is that it looks worse than it does in the Gaussian splatting app. That's because this is based off of a Niagara particle system. And while it is impressive, it does have some limitations. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now. We'll also talk about these coal boxes in a second. And I'm going to delete those as well. And I'm going to bring in my dynamic splat. So let's go ahead and do that. And instantly we can see that it's actually being affected by the lighting. If I pull out one of my lights here and I move it around, we can see that we're lighting up our splat. If I move it away and we just have this rec light here, we can see that that is also lighting our scene up, which is really awesome. Now here you'll notice another limitation. This thing can't cast any shadows. Now it can receive shadows, but unfortunately right now Gaussian Splats cannot cast shadows, which is why this is probably going to be much more useful for visual effects shots where you want to do something cool using Gaussian Splatting like Corridor Digital has, but it is still awesome to have something like a background prop or even a background environment that's going to have no interactivity. But let's go ahead and talk about these coal boxes here. So as we can see, if we go ahead and grab our splat and drag it up, we can see we brought in some of the ground. Let's go ahead and quickly remove that. In the blueprint, I'm going to go over down to the coal box one option and I'm going to check it. Once I've checked it, I can select coal box one and I, we can see exactly what's happening. It's doing exactly what you would think. It is culling the splats that are in its location. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down right until it's above the ground, and then I'm going to scale it to grit so we can actually just get rid of that ground. And now we have a much cleaner looking floor. It is worth noting if we just click on the blueprint and drag it down, everything will move with it, including our coal box, so that makes it easy for us. Now we have these little tufts of grass here that look a little weird, so I'm going to go ahead and enable coal box 2. I'm going to select that guy, and we're going to move that over and just get rid of those. I'm really excited to use this technology more in the future. I'm so glad that Corridor gave it a little bit of a highlight, even if it does feel a little weird that they come out with a video the same day I do. But I hope this was informative for you guys, and I hope you guys can create some awesome stuff using this technology. With Bowshot, it really has never been easier. Either way, I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX. If you found this video useful, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.